Good morning folks, I'm Ken Ring of www.predictweather.com and I'm going to talk to you today about the ETS, the Emissions Trading Scheme because there's not much debate about it in the media they keep it off the TV, they keep it out of the newspapers and they keep out the facts about carbon dioxide which I think you ought to know. First of all, carbon dioxide is heavier than air and sinks to the ground it does not rise up in the sky like they're all trying to convince you that it's doing and more about that in a minute but uh, more importantly it doesn't heat anything it certainly doesn't heat the air if it heated the air then they would be growing hothouse tomatoes in conference halls do you think that little detail would not have escaped would have escaped them uh, do you think they're going to build glass houses all over town to build uh, to uh, grow vegetables in when there's all this hot air available in all the auditoriums of the world of course they're not doing that because they can't also they're not connecting the generators up to the gymnasiums where there could be hot air from all the exercising because carbon dioxide doesn't heat anything if you held a bottle of coke in your hand you're not going to burn your hand uh, the, uh, the, 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 the stuff has no heating properties carbon dioxide is invisible and it's odorless and it's not a pollutant uh, like they say when you see steam coming out of a chimney uh, it's not uh, poisonous fumes because it's certainly not carbon dioxide because you can see it and so it must just be steam and unburnt fuel and uh, the carbon dioxide being the invisible part just drops out because it's heavy but what happens is the heat from the ground buoys it up a little bit uh, because the heat is rising and anything that's of the gaseous nature can go upwards but at night it just falls down again so emissions and exhaust fumes they form a layer called haze which you can actually look down upon from a mountaintop uh, if you live in a city and at night that haze descends and settles and sinks down again with no heat to hold it up and that's when the plants get it and the plants of course eat the carbon and spit out the oxygen they don't want that thanks very much they say we'll have the carbon which we will add to a water molecule and make a carbohydrate which is the building block of nature that happens at night and uh, that's when the plants do their growing carbon dioxide does not rise up if you are in an aeroplane and uh, you look at the monitor that's generally in front of your seat uh, it generally comes on that when you reach 10,000 feet it is naught degrees centigrade outside uh, because that's what it is that is between the height of Mount Ruapehu and the height of Mount Cook and outside as far as the eye can see it is naught degrees if you climb to eight miles which is 35,000 feet which is the level that Boeing's fly it's minus 50 degrees outside there that's the temperature of Antarctica are you at the top of the atmosphere no there's still half the atmosphere to go and if you look out the window not only will you not see vehicle emissions coming past your window whoop, look at that uh, or um, uh, pardon the language a cow's fart coming eight miles up nor will you see factory smoke at that level uh, half the atmosphere is still above you and you will see cirrus clouds above you which are ice clouds which descend as they gather and they form nimbo uh, cumulus which are the rain clouds underneath you in fact you're so high up you can't even see whether you are over land or see you certainly can't see a factory down there or a car's exhaust but they're asking uh, uh, the scientists are asking people to believe that a car's exhaust way down there eight miles below uh, so lukewarm that you can put your hand over a tailpipe of a car and not burn your hand or you can put your hand over a chimney and still not burn your hand from the smoke that's coming up but that um, carbon dioxide coming out of there is going to make it eight miles up without losing its heat and how much of it is going to be making it all uh, that far up well 
If you take the area of my face, there's probably about a hundred thousand molecules of air there. Well, only 38 of those would be carbon dioxide. There is so few carbon dioxide molecules in the air. It's almost nothing. It's 350 parts per million. And uh, it, it is so small. It is equivalent to the thickness of lino on the ground floor of the Empire State Building, which would be the height equivalent to the composition of the air, or the length of a football field uh, would be the composition of the air and the tiny thickness of a white line at the end of the field would be the amount of, uh, not, uh, not even the amount of carbon dioxide, um, a pencil placed on that white line would be the amount of carbon dioxide in that huge run of the length of the football field. That's how little carbon dioxide there is in the air. And so they're trying to give you a lot of rubbish. Um, uh, quite frankly, and uh, because there is no way that carbon dioxide can even get up there, even if it wanted to. It is twice as heavy as air. Carbon dioxide's molecular weight is 44, and that of air is 29. Carbon dioxide sinks. If carbon dioxide went up into the air, the plants wouldn't get it. The plants would have to extend themselves uh, hundreds of feet in the air to even get the stuff, but it is falling. How does it get up there? How did carbon dioxide get into the air before cars and factories came along? Well, it gets pumped out uh, out of volcanoes, and volcanoes are going all the time. There's 135,000 of them that they know about, uh, and there's more underwater. In fact, most of them are underwater, and uh, they're pumping out both methane and carbon dioxide all the time. But the ones above ground are shooting it up 14, 20 kilometers in the air and it slowly drifts down and the cycle of it is about five years uh, for it to drift down again. Carbon dioxide is so heavy that uh, it gets into the holes in the rocks, it gets into the caves. The miners used to get suffocated by it because it would displace the oxygen, which is why they took canaries down to um, uh, uh, as early warning systems that there wasn't enough oxygen uh, in these mines. So uh, please forget the idea that carbon dioxide is warming. Look, I do lots of talks uh, uh, and I talk in auditoriums. I carry this little machine with me which is a meter uh, for carbon dioxide and for temperature. And at the moment it's 475 parts per million and it's 21 degrees. Now that chops and changes all night but um, the temperature usually stays the same, but the carbon dioxide level changes. I take this into halls with me when I'm doing talks. The temperature generally stays the same throughout the length of the talk I give, but the carbon dioxide level shoots way up. In fact, so high it uh, makes this beep and uh, I have to turn it off because it reaches danger level. Well, <laughs> that just proves to you that carbon dioxide rising doesn't the temperature in any way. And uh, I'd just like to dispel you know, some of this rubbish that calls itself climate change and uh, global warming and is supposed to be based on this carbon dioxide heating and rising sort of nonsense. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll have other blogs like this about the alarmism that's coming up and I uh, hope you've got some ideas from it.